Hello guys, we are here again. Last week, I gave you a few tips on how you can stop paying someone else's mortgage and you can start paying your own. Now, this week, we're here to tell you how you should not be waiting until next year and you should purchase your condo today. Why? And I'm going to give you the reasons why you shouldn't wait until next year and you should purchase your condo today. And first of all, you have to understand that one of the main reasons for that is that we have the lowest interest rate ever in history. And for that, I brought you this table where it's playing the historic mortgage rate by decades in the United States. And we're going back to 1970s where the interest rate were around 9%. Then on the 80s, the highest ever recorded interest rate in the United States, around 12 to 15 to 18% interest rate. Back then, back in the 80s, some of you that would purchase mortgage uh, real estate uh, properties, back in the 80s was paying 13, 18% interest rate. Then on the 90s, we went down to 8% interest rate. And then on the 2000s, 2001, 2003, 2006, right before the recession, we were paying 6 to 7% interest rate. Now, the lowest recorded interest rate, mortgage interest rate for real estate was in September 2016. And it was about 3.46% on a 30 year fixed mortgage. Now, the question is, why should you do it now and you now wait until next year? Because this interest rate, they're not predicted to stay low. They are predicted to increase. And according to this table by the National Association of Reactors, the predictions for these rates are that in the first quarter of 2016, they are predicted to increase at least up to 3.6, 3.7. And yesterday, I read an article from the Wall Street Journal that the article states that since the new president was selected no more than a week ago, the interest rate, the 30-year fixed interest rate for real estate went from 3.5% to 3.8% that was published by the Wall Street Journal a couple of days ago. So the interest rate are going up and how this interest rate is going to affect you. Well, you have to understand that if the interest rate goes up, the amount that you can afford on a mortgage, it goes down. So let's say that you went to the bank and you qualified for $250,000 loan, but you didn't purchase a property. But the interest rate that they were giving you was 3.5. Now if the interest rate is 3.8, instead of $250,000 loan, you will be able to afford a $220,000 loan. That's a big difference when you are out there searching for properties, especially right now. For example, Back on 1985, let's say that the lender would qualify you for a payment of no more than $1,000. And with a payment of no more than $1,000, mortgage payment no more than $1,000, back on 1985, you will be able to afford only a house, a property of $100,000. Only a property of $100,000 because you were paying 11.5% interest rate. Then on the 2000s, paying a 7.5% interest rate and with the same mortgage payment you were able to afford a $142,000 property. Okay, same mortgage payment, high interest rate, you can afford a bigger loan, a bigger loan amount. Now, in 2016, with a 3.9% interest rate, 3.8, and the same mortgage payment, right under $1,000, you are able to afford a $210,000 property. Meaning with this, that the, the more that the interest rate increase, the less are your possibility to buy a property today's day. Without disregarding the fact that according to Coralogic and the US Home Price Insight Report from the National Association of Realtors, the prices are predicted to increase on the monthly basis by 0.4% and on the yearly basis by 5.4%.
So the interest rate going up and the real estate prices going up, you're running out of options if you keep waiting. You're going to have to stick to your landlord and you won't be able to buy a property if you keep, you keep waiting. You're running out of possibilities. So if you increase the rates and you increase the prices before you were able to afford a condo of $250,000 to $270,000, next year, that won't be true anymore. Now, your loan amount and your purchase price will go down from $250,000 to $270,000 to $220,000. So then again, folks, if you have any questions, regarding all this, please get in contact with us. We'll be more than happy to help you. Next week, we're going to tell you how you can get financing for condominiums. What is the difference of getting financing for a condominiums and a single family home? And how today's day, there are new ways to get financing to, for condominiums, okay? Thank you for watching and make it a great day.